Finally, the Spirit-led church practicing REM is a space of dreaming, a space where dreams are a means of communication between God and humans. In the ancient Near East and in the biblical worldview, the sacred importance of dreams and dreaming was and is understood. The 21st century church must then be a space wherein dreams are induced so that we can receive God's ongoing revelation. Clergy and lay leaders who are willing to lead as religious ethical mediators will be able to encourage or to induce a theological ethical rim sleep from which all of God's people, when awakened, will be empowered to make wise choices, including choosing an alternative future that has characteristics like these lines from an untitled poem from the dinner party that go like this, and then all that has divided us will merge, and then compassion will be wedded to power, and then both men and women will be gentle, and then both women and men will be strong, and then all will share equally in the earth's abundance, and then all will live in harmony with each other and the earth. We will have the capacity to choose such an alternative future. Now, the church in the African-American experience at its best, I think, has been and can be, continue to be a place and a space of dreaming. The black church has been a place and a space where African-Americans and whosoever has chosen to join us have already been living into tensions. Lincoln and Mamaya talk about those tensions as tensions between the priestly and prophetic, between the otherworldly and thisworldly, between universalism and particularism, between communalism and privatism, between the charismatic and the bureaucratic, between resistance and accommodation. And we have been and are in the African American church a space of dreaming as God intends when we have been able to not seek to synthesize or resolve those tensions, when we have precisely lived into them. And we've been able to do that when we've allowed many sources of wisdom and knowledge alongside the authoritative sources of scripture and tradition. When we have acknowledged that it takes all kinds of sources to evoke and provoke moral imagination and therefore to induce theoethical, liberative, transformational REM, R-E-M sleep. Unfortunately, currently the black church, and I think most churches, tend to inhibit such sleep required for dreaming. We in the 21st century churches get mired instead in our tensions today as irreconcilable polarities. And we're too frequently drawing lines around the polarities, such as male and female, heterosexual and homosexual, such that we actually have made the church a place needing rules of engagement rather than a space opening itself evermore to the Spirit of God and thus to dreaming. Dreaming, beloved community, in the 21st century requires churches and all kinds of communities of faith that are spaces of encounter, spaces for intra-religious pluralism among Christians and inter-religious diversity with people of other faiths. Seeking to practice REM, seeking to live as religious ethical mediators must become our vocation as people of faith in the 21st century. We must have REM as a calling and be willing to nurture the quest for ethical life as cross-cultural encounter, as a quest for interdependency, as a quest for healing, as a quest for just peace. 
We must live as religious ethical mediators who expect that our encounters with a diversity of voices will be opportunities for creative, generative, spirit-driven ethical responses to emerge. We must not fear the space of encounter. Four poetic last quick words. In 1969, Langston Hughes wrote, what happens to a dream deferred? In 1989, 99, Sweet Honey in the Rock sang in dream variations, nothing lights a fire like a dream deferred. In 1995, Emily Towns wrote in To Be Called Beloved, to be called beloved is to be called by God, to be called by the shining moments, to be called deep within deep. To be called beloved is to answer the question, we are not dipped, we are not immersed, we are washed in the grace of God. In 2003, Tara J. Morrow wrote, we know the same song, a vibration in the spirit, that lives and breathes and cries out, see me, hear me, know me, I am real. It is a song that was planted in the fertile soul of our souls, a soil of our souls that grows in the nurturing warmth of our dreams, that perseveres through our sometimes cold realities. Our ancestors knew that song. They taught it to us. And from somewhere deep inside, our voices keep rising for justice, keep growing in truth, keep changing the world. Not because we are all seeing, not because we are all knowing, but because we are all believing. Now is the time for dreaming. Now is the time to open our hearts. Now is the time for living as religious ethical mediators. Thank you.